Hello, what's up? Good people, how you all doing today? I hope that you're all well, wherever you are. Well, good to hook up with you at this moment through this channel. And please, please, pal, if you've not subscribed, hit the subscription button. Please subscribe to this channel. It will be awesome. It will be really, really awesome for Shizu Manizu. Okay, I know you all probably asking yourself what the vibe today with uh I know I know I know you're all wondering like what's cooking? Well today I wanna share scriptures with you my friend. I've been looking at some prophets and more dope collection from the holy books. And let me ask, what's your favorite book in the scriptures? All right. Without wasting any further time, let's get into the scripture. All right, today, today I'll be going through the book of second kings chapter 20 we'll be looking at the story of king hezekiah who became the king who became king at age 25 he became king at age 25 and he ruled for 29 years in uh, second chronicles chapter 29 verse 1 the bible says about hezekiah it says just like his, uh, just like King David, he did what was pleasing to the Lord. It says, King Hezekiah, just like King David, did what was pleasing to the Lord. So uh, Hezekiah was actually a really blessed man. If he can be uh, put in the same rank as David, because David, you know, was really. A unique character actually David is my favorite character in the Bible and uh, he was a soldier and uh, lived a normal life had his ups and downs and weaknesses but through it all he made it and is called a friend of God and that really inspires me to move on and to keep pressing on because through it all God is the solution, and God is the solution is the title of today's message. Welcome. Hello, friends. Blessed day to you all. Blessed, blessed, blessed day. Well, today, I want to get straight into the scriptures. We're going to be learning about the scriptures and uh, it's really a great honor for me to be able to bring the scriptures at this moment today I'll be entering straight into 2nd Kings chapter 20 and uh, in 2nd Kings, uh, in, in Kings chapter 20 We'll be seeing the story of one man called Hezekiah. Hezekiel. But also very interestingly, in the same chapter, there is also a very famous prophet, a very powerful prophet, whose name was Isaiah. Isaiah had so much favor with God that even as you're gonna see in this uh, chapter he could ask you what do you want God to do for you and God will do it immediately he there's, there's actually a story in the Bible where he told people it was in the middle of a drought there was no food and there was no rain there was nothing it was dry and he told the people there tomorrow at a time like this you will buy maize at a throwaway price everybody laughed at him and was amazed I mean what are you talking about what do you mean tomorrow at a time like this 
will be buying grains at a throwaway price yet not only don't we have grains we don't even have anything to harvest not, don't, not only didn't they have anything to harvest there was even no rain or even any signs of rain like it's going even to rain but Isaiah told them tomorrow at a time like this you'll be selling maize at a throwaway price Every thought, everybody thought he was crazy I think if I was in that time I, I don't know what I would have said I would have told, I would have told him okay Ezekiel that's a big that's a, that's a really big uh, that's a really big uh, deal eh? tomorrow maize is being sold at throwaway price yet there is nothing there is even no sign of being anything soon not only is there nothing right now even in the near future there was nothing that looked that is coming through but for sure the following day Ezekiel, I mean uh, Isaiah, 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 God honored Isaiah's word and by the following day at the same time maize was being sold at a throwaway price because what happened is some people attacked them, those people who were hungry then those people who attacked them had a rumor and they ran away and left all their possessions and in their possessions was all the grain so you these guys just came and took all the grain. They didn't even have to fight. Those guys who were attacking them, then they had a rumor that these guys have some special weapons. So they all took off running and left all their possessions, their weapons, their grains, everything they had, even gold. They ran away for their lives. Yet it was just a rumor that these guys were actually very hungry and uh, almost dying of, of, of hunger. But God honored Isaiah's word and it happened. The following day, so today, uh, as I look into Second Kings chapter twenty, I want to name my top my 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 what I'm, my teaching today is named God is the solution. God is the solution. That's the title of today's teaching. God is the solution. What do I mean God is the solution? Like I've just told you Isaiah's story. The way he was so blessed and he told people that the following day it would happen. And for sure, God was the solution. Because it was God who spread the rumor in the people, the people who were attacking them. It is God's angels who went down and have spread rumors to among the people that caused them to fear so much and ran away. That was God's doing. It's God's angels who actually went down and spread the rumors in the enemy's camp. So, God was the solution. Let's get into the scripture. Chapter 1, verse, I mean chapter, chapter, 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1. In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. Actually, this is the story of Hezekiah. If you follow it up, this was actually in the time Hezekiah was actually the king. So we are talking of the king. Like we would say in today, maybe uh, the king... The king of America is Joe Biden, so maybe you say Joe Biden, or maybe you say uh, the king of uh, Netherlands, or New Zealand, actually the king of New Zealand, she's called uh, Jacinta, yeah, so this was the king at that time, his name was Hezekiel. Hezekiel became ill and was at the point of death. Now, it can you imagine a king being so sick and is at the point of death? Because uh, one thing I remember when Donald Trump was president and uh, all these doctors were checking up on him and all this corona, when he had coronavirus and he was uh, 
talking there on, on television and they were saying uh, one thing about being president you've got all the best doctors working on your body and it's true I believe Donald Trump had the best doctors working on him because he was the king at the moment so even Hezekiah definitely had the best doctors but none of them could find a solution to his ailment actually he had a boil this Ezekiel had a boil the honest truth is he had a boil and this boil had gotten him so sick he was almost dying then the prophet Isaiah the prophet Isaiah went to Ezekiel and said to him this is what the Lord says put your house in order because you are going to die you will not recover this is not the prophet huh? this is the prophet has come to tell Ezekiel put your house in order you will not recover you're going to die even the prophet has come with bad news huh? Ezekiel has tried doctors. The doctors are not working. Now he's going to the pro he's, the prophet has come, and instead of the prophet coming with some very good news, the prophet came direct to Ezekiel the king and said, "Put your house in order, man. You're dying. Huh? You're dying. Huh? Put your house in order." Now, oh, poor king Ezekiel, this must be very heartbreaking news for him. I mean, he was literally dying. And uh, just before this, uh, in, the, in the, what had been happening just before he got the boil, he was in the middle of war, actually. He was in the middle of war with the, with the Assyrians. And the Assyrians had been uh, threatening him, and they had actually been really threatening him. And they had already taken part of his uh, terri country. They had taken part of, 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 of those territories. And now they were only waiting to take over his capital city. And they were really uh, threatening him and telling him, we are taking over. And uh, Hezekiah would uh, seek God's advice and God will tell him, Hezekiah, keep fighting on, I'll, I'll fight for you, I'll win for you this battle. I'll win for you this battle. So he, he expected at least to win the battle, but the, the, the fight he was fighting with the, with the Assyrians, who were trying to take over his land. But as fate would have it, he got a boil and it was so bad, no one could cure it. And now here comes the prophet, who normally brings in the good news from God that he's going to defeat the Assyrians. Even the prophet comes in and tells him, my friend, I love you, but just put your house in order, man. Because uh, the way I can look at you and see you, the way it's looking, you better put your things in order because it looks like you're going. Ezekiel was heartbroken. But let's see what happened. After that, After that, Hezekiel turned his wall, his, his face to the wall. It says Hezekiel turned his face to the wall. My friend, you may be there, maybe you've received bad news. Maybe the, the person you expected to bring you good news also gave, came with, uh, 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 the, with, a, with, a, with a prognosis that really does not match up to your destiny. You know God has put a great destiny in your shoulders. You know you, you're going places. But the way you're looking, you are probably on your deathbed. You're probably uh, 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 fighting off this uh, pandemic in a very uh, 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 tough way. Because, you know, since this pandemic hit, so much has changed for everyone. I hear some of uh, it made 
some people, I, I've heard that some people, things stand for the better. I've heard of that, like, of course, if you sell surgical masks, uh, if you're a company that makes that, of course, their, 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 their business has gone up. But some of us, you know, we just crumbled and uh, crushed with the, with the pandemic. And now we are just trying to survive here and there. And things seem to be moving at times from bad to worse. Like, for example, even there is a drought. Huh? There is a drought. The food, food prices are going high. Oil prices are going up. Everything seems just to be going haywire, you know. Kids. I know, I have no, some are not, are not going to school. Sometimes there is even no money to pay the, 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 the school fees. Huh? Things have just gone, you know, like... Most of us, we are living, you know, today. A minute, one, one minute at a time, you know. You don't know where you are next move. Will, you know, you don't, you know, you don't, you're not sure whether your most next move will actually transpire to anything. Huh? Some of us have jobs, we lost them. We were trying to look for a job every day, every day you're knocking. Seems like a brick wall. You're trying to make calls and you know, you're just surviving on bar probably borrowing money, friends, donating money a little bit, borrowing money, debts, or even doing other things that you normally would not do, but now you have to do them to survive. And now you're wondering, is there an end to this? Is there an end to this? My brother, my sister, my friend, I'm here to tell you God is the solution. God is the solution. Look at Hezekiah, the king. He had all how he had all the doctors. He had all the doctors. Yet no none of them had the solution to cure his boy. He turned to the prophet. The prophet told him, put your house in order, you're dying, my friend. And now Hezekiah turns to the wall and starts to pray. He tells God, remember Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiel wept bitterly. Hezekiel wept bitterly. My friend, God is a solution. Do not look for solutions from your neighbor. Do not look for solutions from the doctor. At times the doctor has, doesn't have the solution. Yes, I'm not saying it's bad to go to the doctor. It's good. But even as you go to that doctor, pray that the God, the God of Abraham, the God of Ibrahim, the God of Yaqub, the God of Yusuf, The God who created everything, heaven and earth, will heal you, will work marvelous, will touch the doctor's brains, will show the doctor exactly the right position of your, you know, the, he'll lead the doctor with wisdom to get you the right medicines. Don't just go to the doctor blindly, but first put your trust in God. When you're leaving the house, for a business deal. Ask the Lord to lead you, to walk with you, to give you favor, to open doors that will have been shut. And he will do it just like he did it for Ezekiel. Pray God to give you the rain and you will receive the harvest in abundance. I'm telling you, my friend, it doesn't matter. 
It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter where you are. God is ready to receive you with open arms. See, God had told Isaiah, go and tell that Ezekiel he is dying. Tell him he is dying. That was actually Isaiah, Isaiah prophesying for the Lord. Ezekiel was smart. He turned his face to God and prayed. And told, please God, forgive me. Forgive me, I know that wrong. But shine your light on me. Shine your light on this darkness. Shine your light on this darkness. God wants you to acknowledge him as, as, your, as your king. God wants you to be his, 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 his. Close friend. God wants to be your companion, just like he became a companion to Ezekiel. When he was in the name of need, he was very sick. The doctors could not help him. His soldiers could not help him. But God healed him. Because what happened next? After Ezekiel prayed, as, uh, as Isaiah was leaving, before Isaiah had left the middle court. So Isaiah was actually walking out. The Lord told him, came to him and told him, go back, go back, my messenger. Elijah, Isaiah was God's messenger. You know, God had many messengers he sent. He sent us many, very many messengers. He sent many messengers uh, 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 to his beloved to, to guide, to teach, to send to give us messages so he said he told his messenger he told his messenger go back go back and tell Hezekiah the ruler of my people tell Hezekiah the king this is what the Lord the God of your father David says I have heard your prayer and seen your tears I will heal you on the third day from now you will go up to the temple of the Lord yes yes I'm here to proclaim to somebody right now that God has heard your prayer I'm here to, to proclaim to somebody right now that God has seen your tears I'm here to proclaim to somebody right now that your situation is changing I'm here to proclaim to somebody right now that you are being promoted. I'm here to proclaim to somebody right now to receive your healing. I'm here to proclaim to somebody right now to receive your breakthrough. I'm here to proclaim to somebody right now to receive, 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 receive. Receive because God has done it for you. Whatever your expectation, whatever your expectation. All right, friends, I hope today's message has blessed you. Please pray with me. Let's pray. Pray with me, please. Say, God, I thank you for your love. Thank you for creating me. Thank you, God, for forgiving me my sins. Thank you that you are God and there is no God beside you. Amen. God loves you, my friend, and wants you to be the best you can be using all the unique uh, gifts that he has given you. Don't shy away and run away from his blessing. Let God work through you and in you and it shall all be alright. Alright, till next time, take care. Bye-bye.